start with uh, something different. So, um, yeah, this is this is the session about uh, using Drupal as a platform for your for your uh, for your startup. Uh, it's about basically how we can build prototypes with, with Drupal. Um, one thing that I would like to do is <laughs> I would also like to invite you to an event that we are organizing in Slovenia in May. Um, we did the Drupal camp Alpe Adria last year in uh, in Ljubljana. So this time we we did it in in my hometown. It just it's going to be just near the just near the coast, like 15 minutes from from the beach, and uh, you know you can you can get there from you know, from UK. You have a you have a quite uh, I mean there are there are good connections, and I would really like to invite you there. Uh, I believe it's going to be a a great event. You know also the the weather is is very nice at that time already. So don't forget to get to bring your you know swimming stuff <laughs> with you. Um, and if someone is is uh, interested, we are still uh, looking for for speakers. So if someone has something inter interesting to tell, you know, uh, just approach me and, and and we can talk about it. Uh, yeah, let's continue with the actual presentation. So end of end of the commercials. Um, so why am I here? I mean, why am I am the one doing the presentation about lean startup development? Um, <coughs> I'm not. I'm not, uh, you know, like, like they say, uh, a serial entrepreneur. Um, but I was, as a Drupal developer, I was involved in uh, in a couple of startupish products. Um, that means that the website that we were building was actually a product. So it wasn't a brochure site where you know there was just some information there. But the, you know, the actual Drupal web, and the actual Drupal platform was used for for. Um, purposes of of business and that's my definition you know where 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 a website becomes a product is when it starts making money where it has uh, some business logic in it that is actually a product and everything else is you know a website a presentation and um, I was I'm Drupal I'm in Drupal about six years now I started as a, de as a designer so I'm this I'm still doing uh, consultant work as a user experience designer for for startups that are using Drupal, but I'm also uh, I got also involved with the actual site building and developing. Um, it's not something that I I am uh, really you know uh, uh, expert in, but I can do a lot of things. Um, I had a lot of my own ideas, as you know probably you know m most of us have, and the problem was that I never went to the point that I would release something, show it to someone. So that someone would actually start using it and give me some feedback, and that was, you know, that was the failure that I was doing for the last couple of years for my own products. I am very good at, you know, consulting with with others, but <laughs> for myself, I'm a I'm a terrible uh, product manager. Um, and uh, well, just recently, I uh, we just released uh, our own uh, uh, software as a service product. It's for it's for uh, recruitment. It's called Flyjobs, and it's basically a video-enabled applicant tracking system. It's uh, it's still in the in the in the phase of prototype. Uh, I mean, it it is released as a beta for you know for some invited uh, users, but honestly, it doesn't. It it's not it's not doing. It's not on the production level yet. Uh, but the good part is that we are now receiving feedback from people that are, uh, you know, testing it, and uh, we're going to do public uh, public beta very soon in a couple of weeks. And so this presentation was actually based on that, from experiences for from the last three months, I guess. Uh, I was able to produce a working prototype in two days. Where, pap where people were actually able to post a job post, I mean, job position, and other people were able to respond to that position with a video. So that was that w that 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 took me two days, and you know this was the this was the point where I was started when I started thinking that this should be something that other people should know about. Um, 
and uh, all that all that came from from you know reading this uh, uh, book from Eric Ries. How many of you have read have, have read this? It's really nice. Yeah, good. It's really um, this this stuff is really hyped now. It's, it, it's actually a buzzword. So this lean startup thing is is so hyped, um, and I hate hype. So for example, I hate you know even you know this startup hype, lean startup hype, because basically they are just words. But you know beneath that there is actually some methodology that you know we can use in our everyday product. I mean even if we are just doing development as as a, you know, as a consulting or as a web agency, we can learn a lot from that. <coughs> and I think that lean startup approach is the way that that um, we should be building all of our products. Uh, the the problem is that our clients are not educated in that way, and um, they always think about you know documentation. They always want to have their wishes fully you know executed. And from this book, you learn why that is not a really good idea. Um, so yeah, what is lean startup? Uh, the it has one of you know it has a few definitions. Uh, one of them is that, that is a buzzword, I guess. But it's a methodology how you would start producing a new product. It's actually um, it's actually. Uh, couple of methodologies. For example, you must know uh, Agile, you know, methodology. Uh, it goes very well with the Lean Startup thing. Uh, but with the Lean Startup thing, it's a lot of uh, a lot of weight goes to the to the measure and learn uh, part. So you know, you build something and you measure whatever you you are you know you have some you have something to test and you build that and you measure the results and you learn from them and you know. Measuring and learning is, is actually the most important part here, but we are going to talk about the build here uh, because Drupal, Drupal cannot really help you with the learn process. It can help a little bit with the measuring, but you know it is actually a tool for building something. Um, you know, it, it's all about releasing something very very soon, and 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 uh, do a lot of uh, you know uh, do a lot of versions of that. And just try to get more and more uh, feedback on that. Um, so the the point is that you release a minimal viable product, you know, in the first day that you got an idea. So, for example, if I got an idea about uh, when I got this idea about you know video recruiting, um, I st I set up this you know sign up landing page where I was just taking e you know some people's emails. And uh, then I bought some AdWords. I mean, then I started my AdWord campaign, where I just spent some money so that people actually come to the site. And based on you know signups, I could tell you know if people are very interested about this. Um, and basically, you have to set those goals. You have to set I yourself. You know, if you say you know if I get 100 uh, clicks, I mean if I have 100 visited, uh, visits on my website. Or you know, on my on my sign up page, uh, I want I don't know 20 of them. I, I want 20 sign ups from that. And if you achieve that goal, you know you go to the next stage because you know that this is something that it's actually worth doing it. You know, and so I didn't start you know with any Drupal code at that at that point. I just wanted to see you know if people actually if they're actually interested. And uh, for example, uh, a similar thing uh, was done. By Groupon, uh, they didn't start with you know developing the full system. Basically, what they do is they set up you know a WordPress website, and they have some uh, they had some April script that was sending the PDFs and generating the PDFs. So they started with you know just combining all you know all the things that they had, they just put them together and created a prototype. And when they saw that people are actually you know interested in that business, you know they started with developing a real platform that they probably use or, uh, now. Um, it was a very similar thing with, with, uh, with many other startups. Um, 
there is a there is exe there, there are ex examples of of those pro of those uh, minimal viable products on this link. It's actually an Excel file which you can see. Um, yeah, so you know this is this is the part when when Drupal is not really you know being used, but it is it is the right way if if you want to start something. Now, okay, now you you got the you got the results that your business you know ac might actually be 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 something that the people would use, and um, so where do you start? There is actually um, MVP Creator distribution. It's based on Panopoly. Panopoly is a very a very nice uh, uh, distribution, which is basically meant to be a base, base distribution. It is, uh, you know, like a distribution like, I don't know, Commerce Kickstart or Aqua Commons, uh, but it's basically meant for, for to be a starting point for, for other distributions. And um, it leverages, you know, panels and all other good practices. So I guess that that would be a great, great way to start. But if you want to start from from zero, I would at least recommend you to set up your your you know side builder environment, uh, you know, with a couple of your tweaks. I guess it 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 all depends on where are you right now, you know, in the Drupal world, what is your experience and so on. And yeah, to be honest, this is it's easier if you are you know experienced side builder than if you are a beginner. Can still, you can still start doing it. Um, I mentioned site building a lot because um, if you're building something and you want to, you know, finish it in a couple of days, uh, I don't think that you know coding is would be the right approach to do it, uh, and it's not. So you have twenty thousand modules, I guess, <laughs> in Drupal, and there's a saying, you know, there's a module for that, and so basically all of anything that anything that that your business needs, so any kind of uh, functionality, it's probably solved already. So, for example, in my example, you know, when we're building this uh, slide jobs, uh, you know, the the biggest thing is uh, the biggest thing is that how how do you record people through the webcam, right? And so I found um, I found uh, the service called called Camera Tech, and guess what? There was a, actually a module that already implemented that service. So I just plug it in, and you know, the people who were doing uh, the camera tech module, you know, weren't necessarily doing it as you know for the same thing as I was, because my you know my business logic behind it was different than than, than theirs. So you know, you have s just you know start googling whatever you want to achieve, find other services that, that maybe do it. Just you know, find find your or find your you know find your puzzles and just get them together. Um, so, um, when you are choosing some, you know, when you're getting some modules, um, s try to avoid modules that are not really done, you know, Drupal 7 way. So, um, it's best if they, if they use entities and if they leverage uh, C tools. Um, I'm going to speak about it in, uh, on the next slides, but the, the, the thing is that uh, if you're going to use uh, rules and panels and views, if you need those things to get, you need those models to actually talk to them. And um, also, there's a lot of um, modules that are, you know, a whole framework altogether. Uh, so, for example, if you have commerce, uh, views, you know, they, it's a, it's there's a actually an ecosystem around that. So you can you can plug other other add adds on to them and make them even more advanced. Uh, but on, on the other hand, you know, don't be afraid to use some development version or sandboxes. I was actually use, I was I'm actually using something for production from from a sandbox, no, not really for, for production, but for the prototype, because I don't really care. I mean, even if, if it has some bugs, even maybe if it's not secure, you know, it is a prototype. You don't at that point you don't really care about that. It, I mean, if it works and if you can show it to someone, if, I mean, if this person can give you feedback, you wouldn't really care because. You could build something that is stable, and people would go, you know, we don't need that. And what's the difference then? Um, so don't don't be afraid to do something more, uh, you know, sketchy. But um, on the other hand, this uh, this can still have some, you know, 
future um, uh, future you know you can get in trouble because of that um, but it just depends on on what you're building I guess um, it's it's very good that you start with a good data structure uh, I think that best the best thing is to do that you put all the data in, you know, in some kind of entities, and I would just suggest that you use Node as for you know almost everything. Um, this is not this is not like maybe it's not the right approach, but for the purpose of of the prototype, I think that uh, you could leverage the most because nodes have very good support in views, rules, panels. You can basically do everything with them. <coughs> The reason is that, you know, uh, Drupal is a CMS and content is the basic of the CMS, and so people were just doing a lot of work on the content. And if you store something that's not not really a content into a content time, that's nothing wrong. You know, for example, a subscription. You know, the definition of a, su a subscription. So I am su I am I am subscribed to something. Uh, Includes some kind of information. For example, uh, when this when does this uh, uh, subscription ends? You know, th this can actually be a content, even though it's it's not. So you know, uh, the point is that you use that for, for storing the data. Um, then you have other well-supported entity uh, bundles, I guess. Yeah. So entity types. So for example, taxonomy or or user. Although I would just use user, you know, just for the login, and not to store too much data in the user object, but actually create a helper or create an extension of a user that you can just link to. So, for example, a profile where you have information about the address, the image, you know, all that. Don't put those fields into into the user object, but create a, a content type called profile, and then just li link those two. Uh, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't seem like a good idea at the start, but uh, the point is that you get a lot of more flexibility in the future. Um, yeah, of course, you have to use fields. Uh, it's best to use fields that are, that already have some metadata, metadata in it. So, for example, if you're creating a link, but I mean, you don't create a text field with a link in it because you don't get enough. You don't get you don't you don't get enough features around that, and you would have to build your own you know your own parameters. But just try and and find appropriate uh, field. There's practically field for for everything. I mean, here I just mentioned the the most obvious one, but you have for example you have a field for for time. So it's not a date, it's a time. So you know one second, one hour, or or thirty days. Um, there's uh, uh, for example, there's a date for color, you know, that efficiently stores and it, it has an interface for selecting colors and so on. These are all things that can be very, very useful. <coughs> and then, of course, you use entity reference to fill, to, to link the data together. Um, there are a couple of those, uh, and I would just use entity reference um, in general. Um, there's also... Um, Relation module, which is which is kind of advanced, advanced way to get link uh, to get uh, data linked together. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, relation in, in the next slide. So the point is that you break the content as, as much as possible. You can always load something. So for example, if you are looking at the, at the profile page, um, uh, for example, if if you take a look at the at the commerce uh, platform. You have a um, you have an order, but each order has its uh, its address as a separate entity. You know you could you could simply put address field into the order, but uh, the reason was why they separated that because um, you know you can see at the order and, and you can still call the address as an entity separately. But if you bake that into the order, uh, you cannot just add some extra things to it. Um, so uh, just try to 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 put to put all the data into separate entities as much as possible. Um, there is also one thing. I mean, there's also one one ecosystem. It's not really. I mean, 
it is a module, but it's the whole ecosystem of it. It's organic groups. Um, you know, in Drupal, groups are for, you know, community uh, communication. Mm -hmm. So each group can have its own forum, you know, and news and so on. But don't look at it in, in that way. Um, what, what you get with groups is really a lot of other things. And it's great for linking content together, linking content with users and so on. So for example, in, in, in the relation, this is an example, you know, where a customer has a subscription to a video course. This is one of the projects th th that I was working for. Um, you know, for, you can just say, okay, customer has a link to video course. And you know, now, you ha now I have the, the permission to actually look at, at those videos. But uh, I don't get the extra metadata in it. So if, you am, if I'm using relation for that, I get the link. Uh, from customer to video, but I, I can also add, you know, other fields to it. For example, I added ex expiration field and I added the status field. So, for example, if I, if my uh, subscription uh, uh, expires, I don't just remove the link, but I just say that that I just I just say that that link, you know, is not active anymore or it expired, and that way, you know, uh, during the cron job. I can just send the link, I mean, I could just send email to all of the expired uh, users, and if I wouldn't have that information, I would just be very, I mean, I would just be blind about what's actually going on in the system, you know, who is not, uh, you know, which of the, which of the um, subscription are expired and which of them are active and so on. Um, so, relation is, is a great module. It has, you know, a good Steam learning curve, I guess. But uh, it's very good, I mean, uh, support in rules and views is very good. But it's not, sometimes it, it, it brings a little bit more of, 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 you know, complexity. So, you know, just know why are you using that. Um, <coughs> as I mentioned before, we have organic groups. With organic groups, um, it, is, it, it is a very, you know, don't look at it, as I said before, don't look at it as something that is just for, you know, for, for the same reason as, as Drupal is uh, actually using it. But uh, we are actually doing business logic with that. Um, so, you know, if you have a software as a service product and you sign up, you get, uh, you, also you, you also create by the, you know, on the fly, you also create a company where you're where actually the, the administrator in it. And you can, you know, now you can invite more people into that company. You know, for example, if you have a task manager system, as in this example, uh, you can then invite more people into your company. Uh, you can, you can, uh, you know, give permissions to that people. And you know, it's not about it's not about communication anymore. It's basically uh, a hub that, you know, all other stuff gets gets around that. Uh, it also handles permissions, it has uh, per field uh, permissions, which is very nice. Um, so it's really a great, a great, a great system. And you have so much add-ons for that, that is really, you know, it's really useful. And try to take, I mean, try to find some, some, some resources about organic groups. Because again, it, it, it is a, a framework inside of Drupal. So you need, to, you need to understand that. Um, now, you know, the, the other parts are, now we, get, now we got our data structure, and now we want to, you know, display that data in some way that uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's actually useful for, for our users. And nothing beats panels here. Um, it's not only that it, you know, it, it removes the default block system, which is not very useful, but it also takes care of a lot of logic. Uh, so for example, we're doing a lot of, you know, permission checkups here. Um, we are doing a lot of, you know, context. Um, so we are display, displaying some data depending on, you know, what, what your context is, what your, what your permissions are. Um, uh, it, can, it can override some default stuff on Drupal and so on. Um, you know, what goes, what is actually very useful together with panels, and I really recommend it. 
uh, is the panels everywhere module. It's basically the approach where you get totally rid of uh, all the block system and every page that, that you're looking at is generated by panels and now you will have a full control of uh, of the whole layout and you can have different variations and so on. This is again something that that you should uh, check on you know there's I think that th there's also a session about panels and panels everywhere uh, today or tomorrow and I really I really would recommend you to, to, to see that because with that tool you really have um, the, the opportunity how do you structure your data I mean how do you display your data is just unlimited um, and uh, again of course you have to you have to take care of your interface I wouldn't I wouldn't go too far with that um, just try to use what you have if you're using panels everywhere um, just get some team that supports that and I was very um, I was very surprised how easy it was for me to build something in Bootstrap, to build something that actually, you know, actually looks like a product. So check the on the Bootstrap um, team, um, and uh, the only do the only problem was that it dictates the markup a little bit, but it it is actually a good thing in in some of my examples, I mean, in some of my cases, um, and I think that uh, a lot of a lot of products, products that are not Drupal at all. Uh, I mean, Bootstrap really became the I IKEA of you know of web design. So you can see a lot of stuff built built upon you know Bootstrap. It's just very easy you know to put together something and it actually looks good. <coughs> now the the of course the most important part you know if you're building a product, this product has something unique. It works some, you know. It somehow it works somehow that it actually brings the value, and the only thing and the only way that that you can achieve this is that you have some logic behind. So you know your product becomes a tool in some way, either it's a either it's a commerce or software as a service, whatever, and you really can get <coughs> done a lot with rules. Um, rules are uh, user interface uh, way of of building. Um, you know, logic around it. So, if something happens, uh, do this. When this happens, do that. But don't do that if this happens, and so on. It's basically you know just building up your your workflows and so on. And uh, if you you know if you if you followed my uh, my recommendations about using you know nodes and using entities, uh, you can you can basically do uh, a lot of modification. You can do a lot of stuff with with that, so you, you can create new new content. You can delete it. You can modify it, uh, and all that with rules. With you know, right? Just basically not writing any single line of code. Um, and it's also good for for the measurement. You know, part of the lean circle. Uh, you can log a lot of events, uh, so you know that uh, you can start tracking. You know, what are your users doing on on the platform? And I think that's that's very valuable. Uh, what's also um, nice nice to have is to do some some permissions, because if you if you build all you know upon those content types and so on, that just means that you know you can assign a role to edit some kind of some type of some type some type of content, and that's usually not enough because your platform will be you know much more advanced than that, I mean much more complicated than that. And you know you can basically use rules for that. You know, okay. You know, user create user wants to create a new content, and user wants to edit that content. And now you can do you know all sorts of checkups. You know, is this user part of a group? Is this user a friend of mine? And I if if that you know if that all turns true, then you know I can edit that content. If not, I get I get my uh, access denied. Um, another. Another thing that you would prob you would probably get I mean you would probably need to do is to implement some kind of you know commerce um, commerce logic or you know commerce features into your system and I would only recommend to use uh, you know Drupal commerce 
module and the whole ecosystem ecosystem with it. There are a couple of other solutions where you can uh, when you can just simply use PayPal to buy a roll or something like that. <coughs> but really because commerce is done, you know, the right way, it is basically it's it's run by rules and views. Uh, you can hook into you know practically everything and you can alter it and you can change everything. So it's it's you know, you can build a, uh, a simple, you know, product, you know, that, I mean, a simple website that sells products, but you can also build something, uh, in, in my example, it was a platform where you can buy access to watch videos, which, you know, it is a very similar thing, but in the background, the logic is totally different, but it was all done just with a couple of rules and altering some, some, some views. Um, the other part is that uh, you probably have to take care of communication, how how user gets notified, and how you you know how y how the system <coughs> sends some not sends some notifications. Um, here I have very good experiences just using Mendrel. Uh, I haven't really implemented a lot of statistics because each email that is sent by Mendrel, you know, all the links get altered, so you can really track how many links got clicked and so on. So, you know, in the future, or if you want to do it as a, uh, if this is a part of, of the prototype, uh, I guess that you could simply uh, run that logic also. Um, and there are also the, in you know, the, the messages or the notification inside of the system. There is the message uh, module, which again is very, it has a lot of add-ons around that. So we can really build in, in, into something into something more advanced. Imagine that, like a, you know, Facebook activity stream where you can just see <coughs> what happened in the last in, in the last day. Again, this is it. Just um, depends on what you're actually building. Mm. You're allowed to do some hacking if you're doing a prototype. So I mean. Of course, if you want to have, the, if you if you want to build something that it has to be production ready, you basically uh, you're not, you know, it's not very, it's not a, a good idea to, you know, patch a module or uh, that, you know, okay, you can patch a module, but you really have to do some documentation and so on. So the next time that you update that module, you know, you you really have to know that that the, and there was a patch there, so it has has this structured way on how you build things. But if you're building a prototype, I mean, you don't really care about if there is some security risk there, if there is a bug, you know. If it's not, if it doesn't happen to the user, you know, all the time, if, if it's really, I know, like a side case, I mean, at that point, you shouldn't care about all those things um, and just build something that, you know, that people can test. Um, as, as I said before, even use the sandbox versions, you know, all the betas and so on. Um, but you know, there's a there's a question with that. I mean, if we go into production, you know, with whatever we, we build, which is usually not the case, because the point of a prototype is that you build it, you learn something from it, and you did, and then you just throw it away and start, you know, with some fresh, with some fresh development, or build upon that, and then again throw it away, but. In a lot of cases, you would be wondering, you know, why would I throw it away if it actually works, you know? We clear, we clear all the bugs and everything. And then you just have to ask yourself, is this what we are building? Is this going to scale? And is, is actually, I mean, is Drupal the right platform for it? Um, the project that I was working on had a lot of, um, are struggling, are struggling with, uh, with the scalability, you know, and, and the performance part. Because if you have a lot of interactions, uh, you know, for example, building a social network uh, with Drupal, I mean, that wouldn't be, you know, the best example to do it. Because, you know, Drupal is great when you can, when you can just put cash on it and, you know, and uh, put it behind the wireless system, it's going to work, you know, flawlessly. But imagine that you have, <coughs> I don't know, one million, one million users doing interaction with each other, you know, Drupal is going to break at that point. So, depending on, on what you're doing, 
Drupal might might not be the right choice to you know might not be might not be the right platform to pick. But I found you know uh, mostly you know business to business platforms where you don't go for the you know you don't go for you know, for for the number of users, but you actually are trying to solve some business problem and you don't need one million users that your that your system will run. And especially if you if you're building a niche system where you know that you know your whole market is I don't know a couple of hundred and you basically would be you know you would be happy if you if you get I don't know five hundred users. Uh, in that case, you know, go for it because you will have your product built in a couple of weeks, and and you will be able to to release, and you will be able to actually use it in production. <coughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is basically all that I wanted to I, I wanted to say about about my in my point of view. Um, I guess that I, I we have m five more minutes.